the scolopede line, dark typing. The main reason for this typing is due to their dex entries and photo dex entries stating how aggressive all three are, with scolopede noted for attacking its prey relentlessly with quick movements and what sounds like to be vicious takedowns, which is also noted in its anime dex entries by the way, Wolopede noted for crashing furiously into enemies and stabbing them with poisonous spikes, albeit only when threatened, and Renopede stated to be highly aggressive. It could even be seen in the few anime episodes where Scolopede went on a rampage when it was agitated. This could be in reference to their origins from centipedes, specifically with Scolopede, the Scolopendra genus of centipedes, like the Scolopendra giganti and the Scolopendra cingulata, all of which are noted for being highly aggressive and fast when hunting for prey, or especially when agitated. In fact, its French name echoes Scolopede's brutal nature by containing the word brutal in its name etymology. This is resolved despite the fact that they can only learn a few dark type moves, but still, the possibility is there. Whimsicott, dark typing. The big reason for this typing is in its inspirations from the Brazilian folklore Seichi, who are known to play annoying pranks on people and cause mischief, potentially to a dangerous degree, which is backed up with Whimsicott having the prankster ability. And in its dex entries, anime dex entries, and even in its Super Smash Bros trophy description, they explain numerous times how it likes to intrude and cause mischief to people's houses by leaving balls of cotton all over the place, hide important things, and mess up the place, all the while learning a decent amount of dark type moves already. The Chandelure Line Dark Typing Seeing as this Pokemon is likely based on spirits, as indicated by its Chinese name etymology, they may be inspired by the atmospheric ghost light, the Will-O-Wisp, from European folklore, where in some depictions they are referred to as an, quote, evil light, or a sinister or a mischievous spirit that misguides travelers, and this same idea can be seen in the evolution line in their dex entries, like Litwick pretending to guide people or Pokemon lost in the dark only to suck out their life energy, or even guide them to the afterlife, spirit, or ghost world, however you want to put it. This was also noted in the anime dex entries, and in fact, there was even a known episode in the anime that showcased this exact scenario. Next, Lampent stated to be an ominous Pokemon that is feared and is known as the quote, Embassy of Death, stalking people whose death is near and stealing the spirit of the victim. And in its anime dex entries, it mentions that rarely it, alongside Litwick, lead people and Pokemon into the ghost world while stealing their life energy. And with Chandelure, as its name, Pokemon category, anime dex entries, and photo dex entries suggest, it lures its victims near to hypnotize them with its dancing flames and absorbs their spirits, which involves burning the spirit, leaving the body to be empty and leaving them to wander the world forever. Plus, they do get a reasonable amount of dark type moves already. Shelmet, Poison and Steel Typing. Okay, this is one of those rare situations where the pre-evolution should be three types, but not the final evolution form. Let me explain. For the steel typing, as explained in Escavalier's dex entries, Shelmet Shell is what Carablast takes upon evolving which grants it the steel typing, and even in Excelgo's dex entries, it elaborates by implying that the shell is heavy and by removing it gives it tremendous mobility. So if Shelmet Shell is what gives Escavalier the steel typing, then it's simultaneously implying that Shelmet's shell is made out of iron. So why not Shelmet itself? This may be indicative of Shelmet being inspired by medieval closed helmets, as indicated by its English, French, and German name etymologies that were made out of metal and steel, and scaly foot snails, which are known for their outer layer shells being made out of iron compounds, which in the Pokemon world translates into steel. This is even supported by Escavalier getting the shell armor ability upon evolving, which Shelmet naturally has. Now for the poison typing, this mostly ties into its in-game dex entries and anime dex entries detailing how it apparently has the ability to spit out poisonous liquid from its mouth, which is by proxy is also apparent with Excelgor, and especially if we take Excelgor into account, then his is even supported by the fact that it and Exogo can already learn a lot of poison type moves already, including Acid Spray and the poisonous type exclusive move, Toxic. Both Unovian and Galarian Stunfisk, Water Typing. This typing relates to how Stunfisk appears to be based on a variety of, what do you know, aquatic fishes, like the Stargazer fish, but mostly the Flounderfish and the Electric Ray as indicated by its French and German name etymologies, 
and likely the goosefish as mentioned in a past interview with Ken Sugimori in a Dream Nintendo magazine in 2011. All of which are known to inhabit the ocean waters or in the deep sea. And perhaps maybe the Unovian form's shiny colors could be an indication to this. And this is supported by its being in the Water 1 egg group. It is also known to inhabit coastal areas, beach seashores, and nearby water as stated in its in-game dex entries, anime dex entries, and photo dex entry, which is one of the main ways of encountering one in the games like in Unova on Route 8, Icarus City, and Moon of Icarus by walking through puddles, fishing, or surfing, in the swampy area of Carlos on Routes 14 and 19, in the Ultra Space Wilds water world, and in side series games such as Lake Soothing Shores and the Blushing Beach. And this is also seen in the anime with Silent Stunfisk initially inhabiting a lake. Additionally, you can already learn a good amount of water type moves as well, such as Water Gun among others. Golurk, Flying Typing. This one may come off as questionable at first, but let me explain this one. Its dex entries describe it as being able to fly at Mach speed, which is distinctly shown in the anime like with Ridley and Hopper's one alongside its dex entries, movies like Movie 14, and even in the games where it can clearly learn the move fly. And considering the fact that there are Pokemon who can also learn fly and don't have wings like the Force of Nature trio, Genesect, and Dragapult, it wouldn't be illogical to make Golurk a flying type. In fact, looking over the majority of Pokemon categorized as the flying type, it is made clear that Pokemon don't necessarily have to have wings in order to be such type, examples being the Dodrio line, Gyarados, the Jumpluff line, Rayquaza, Minior, and Enamorous to name a bunch. Durant, ground typing. This one derives from where Durant inhabits and makes their nests. And going off of the fact that as indicated by its Pokemon category, its name etymology in all available languages, and an old interview from Ken Sugimori, they are based off ants, or possibly termites as indicated by its French name etymology, likely the Trapjaw Ant, the Silver Spiny Sugar Ant, and the Saharan Silver Ant, all of which are known to rely on soil to survive and live underground. And according to its in-game and anime dex entries, and even anime appearances, it's expressed to make their nests in mountains, meaning that it likes to inhabit dry and arid environments, much like other similar Pokemon like Drillbo and Dugtrio. And in the games, it can be found in such locations as Victory Road in Unova, Twist Mountain, Clay Tunnel, Underground Ruins, Rugged Mountain, Terminus Cave, and so on. Furthermore, this fact is supported by its capabilities to learn the move Dig alongside a good amount of ground type moves already. High Dragon Flying typing. Do I really need to explain this one like Beedrill, Dustox, and Garchomp? <sighs> well, in case it isn't incredibly obvious, there is a slew of evidence that suggests that it should be flying type from most if not all of its appearances in the anime like Cameron's and Lance's one, in movies like in Movie 14, the Pokemon Adventures manga, and in the main series games such as Carlos Victory Road by swooping down from above among others. In all these cases, they depict it using its wings to fly off the ground. This is even clearly stated in its anime and in-game dex entries, just so you know, with it using its six wings to travel the skies. Its in-game 2D sprite and 3D model also clearly shows it flying with its wings. In fact, it was confirmed in a past interview with Ken Sugimori and two other designers back in a Dream Nintendo magazine in 2011 that the appendages on Hydragon's back are wings and are a subtle nod to Yamata no Orochi's many heads, which is what is said to be inspired from. And to top it all off, it can even learn the move Fly in the games in addition to a couple of other flying type moves like Dual Wing Beat. Volcarona, Flying Typing. Again, does this one really need much explanation? Volcarona's design is confirmed by a 2011 interview with Ken Sugimori in a Dream Nintendo magazine to take a moth motif inspiration, and the appendages on its back are in fact wings. And interestingly enough, it supposedly was given six wings so as to make it look less like a regular moth and to create a quote, majestic, dignified, and strong moth. The kind of moth could presumably be the Cecropia moth, the Atlas moth, the Prometheus silk moth, and possibly the kaiju monster Mothra. And what do you know? 
All these have wings that they use to fly, as told in its in-game and anime dex entries and photo dex entry mentioning how they scatter their flaming scales as it flies using its six wings. Never mind the fact that its in-game 2D and 3D sprites all showcase it flying with its wings, as well as the numerous amount of anime, movies, and side series appearances and animated miniseries appearances showcasing the same thing as well. And to top it all off, it can even learn the move Fly in-game in addition to a plethora of other flying time moves already, including Gust and Dual Wing Beat. Thunderous, Dark Typing Just like Tornadoes, this typing is indicative of its violent behavior, which is made much more apparent here than with Tornadoes. Thunderous, as previously mentioned before, is based off the Japanese Shinto god Raijin, just like Raiko, for your information who was depicted as a terrifying demon or oni that could be seen more as a trickster or one causing mischief and caused destruction and chaos by throwing lightning at townsmen and summoning severe storms, which again ties into its title as one of the forces of nature. And this is especially shown in its dex entries by how it leaves destroyed, charred remains upon the land it passes, shooting lightning bolts all over the place, causing forest fires, and going on severe rampages causing fierce thunderstorms, making the people despise and dislike it. And just like Tornadus, this kind of behavior is even expressed in the Generation 5 games and their anime appearances by unprovokedly attacking Ash and the gang and getting into conflict with Tornadus when they meet. Plus, in the games, it even gets the Prankster ability, which you could interpret it to be a Dark-type ability, whilst also learning a surprisingly large amount of Dark-type moves already, such as Lash Out. Reshiram, Flying Typing Within Reshiram's design, its arms are confirmed to be wings, which could be indicative of its possible inspirations from winged beasts, such as wyverns, birds, and pterosaurs, while also perhaps from the symbolic representation of the two contraries, Sulfic Mercury and Sulfic Sulfur, Reshiram being Mercury, from alchemy and western occultism tradition that are depicted as two dragons, one being a white fluffy dragon with two wings, and the other a black scaly dragon with four limbs. As you can presumably guess, its wings are indicative of its ability to fly alongside its electric turbine-like tail when surging with power or emotions in overdrive mode which was confirmed by an old Ken Sugimori interview, by the way, that allows it to fly around at high speeds like a jet airplane. And in case this isn't obvious, this is explicitly shown numerous times, like in the games such as Sword and Shield with its walking animation, and particularly in Generation 5 with N flying on Reshiram or Zekrom at the climax of the Black and White story, and in Black and White 2, its Pokemon Adventures manga depiction when it's fused with Kiram, if that counts, its dex entries as mentioned before, in movies such as Movie 14 and Movie 18, the anime, and in addition to miniseries such as Pokemon Generations. And although it, its flying type move pool is limited, it does notably get the move Fly and Dual Wing Beat. Zekrom, Flying Typing Now, I'll be honest, this one you could maybe disagree with, maybe. But nevertheless, much like Reshiram, and according to old Ken Sugimori interviews in 2011 and 2012, Zekron's protruding appendages on his back are confirmed to be wings which derive from a more, quote, traditional dragon design, which in this case is likely from European dragons as they are depicted traditionally with a pair of wings and four legs, or in Zekron's case, four paws. Furthermore, its appearance may also be derived from the symbolic representation of the two contraries, Sulfuric Mercury and Sulfuric Sulfur, Zekron being Sulfur, from alchemy and western occultism tradition, that are depicted as two dragons, one being a white fluffy dragon with two pairs of wings, and the other a black scaly dragon with four limbs, coincidentally enough. And despite the black dragon not being depicted with wings, you can presumably guess that its wings allow it to fly alongside its electric turbine-like tail when surging with power or motions in overdrive mode, again as confirmed by an old Ken Sugimori interview, that allows it to fly at high speeds like a jet airplane. And this is even explicitly shown in the anime, again in movie 14 and movie 18, the Generation 5 games again with N flying on Reshiram and or Zekrom at the climax of the Black and White story, and in Black and White 2, its dex entries confirming its ability to fly, and again, although it does learn very little flying type moves, it does get ones like Dual Wing Beat and Fly to support this as well. 
And where I say this gets arguable is in movie 14 when battling Reshiram, in which its tail seems to emit an anti-gravity field around itself that just like other Pokemon like Magnezone, allow it to fly or levitate technically with little aerodynamic resistance and gravity, which is in fact shown in Sword and Shield with its walking animation, so I'll leave this one as debatable. Kyurem, Flying Typing Talking about regular Kyurem with this one may be a little confusing just like how I was before, but as a matter of fact, Kyurem does apparently have the ability to fly using its weirdly shaped appendages that are confirmed to be wings on its body that are covered in ice that can break off as shown in Black and White 2 and Pokemon Generations. And also from Black and White 2, it was mentioned by Getsis that the reason for why Kyurem is able to fuse with the other two is due to Kyurem retaining the genes of both of them, which may in fact explain why Kyurem is able to fly as shown in Movie 15, the Pokemon Avengers manga, and even in-game where it is capable of letting the move fly, much like Zekrom and Reshiram, alongside a couple of other flying type moves like Dual Wing Beat. This is despite the fact that much of its depictions and appearances in the show, movies, and even main series games are shown it grounded. But still, nevertheless, it is arguable. Genesect, flying typing. Don't let this wingless design fool you. Genesect is another example of a Pokemon not necessarily needing wings in order to be categorized as a flying type. There's evidence from its anime, movie 16, and adventures manga depiction where it was clearly shown to be able to fly at extreme speeds in a flying saucer-like form by tucking in its head and folding its limbs back, which is referred to as high-speed flight configuration or ko soku hi ko keitai in Japanese. And this depiction is even showcased in the main series games in its walking animation in Sword and Shield, and its Pokeball Retrieval animation in the 6th generation, which is a clever detail. And to top it all off, this idea is even supported by its ability to learn the move Fly in-game. Coincidence? I think not.